In this video, we're going to learn how to take some photographs and make cyberpunk style art with them. I've had some requests from some students on how to do it, so I'll show you how. We're going to be starting off using some basic stock photos online. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to remove the background of this picture here, the sky. So I'm going to use the magic wand, set the tolerance on 32, click in the sky, and then go to select similar. So since the sky is mostly white, it selects everything that's mostly white. Then I go to Select and Mask. I like to use it on the overlay mode, and I have the color red selected. You can change the opacity so that you can see everything that's selected by sliding that to the right. And if you start off and yours is inverted, you can just click Invert so that you have red buildings and white sky. So now I'm going to get the brush tool and put it on minus. And I'm just going to paint over all the things that I don't want to be white. So basically everything except the sky. Make sure your tool is on minus for this. All right, now I'm going to put it on plus, and I'm going to remove a few things that I don't want selected. I'm not going to have my antenna or this um, power line going across my image. You're welcome to leave it on if you want, but I think it looks better without. All right, so now I have everything selected for the sky. So I'm going to unlock my background layer, and it becomes a regular layer, and I can just press delete now. I like to make a copy by pressing Control J, just so I have an unedited version on the bottom. All right, so for the next part, we're ready to start copying in some of our other pictures. We're going to start off with the sky I got on Pixabay. I'm going to copy it and paste it in here. Then I'll use Control T to size it down a little bit. Then I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal, because I want the lightning to be on the open area of the sky in my picture. So press enter or the check mark and I'm going to drag it below so I can see where it is. So see I want the lightning to be a little bit more visible so I'm going to slide it over here so you can see some of that lightning. Alright now we're ready to start copying some of the other elements. I'm going to show you quickly how to use the pen tool to make selections. I know a lot of you don't like it but go to window, paths. There's a learning curve but it's a great tool. Go to Paths, then get the Pen tool. You can press P on your keyboard. And then just do like connect the dots. Just click and drag different points on here. I'll give you a more in-depth lesson on how to use the Pen tool later. But I'm just going to quickly select half of this vest. You'll see why we're only doing half in a little while. So once I have all my dots, then I close it. When I see that circle on the side of my pen, now I can go to Save Path. You don't have to save it, but it's good to save it. You'll see why a little later in this assignment. And then say Make Selection. All right, so now I'm going to copy and paste that in here. I'll name this layer Vest. All right, and this one I already saved the path for you. There's, a, I thought I'd save you some time. I'll give you this file with the path already there. So you click on Paths and see that blue highlighted line. And you can go to Make Selection. Say OK. And then we're going to copy it and paste it into this file. Name it car. And then we're going to go ahead and get our model. I already did the path for you on this one too. So click on Paths, make selection, say OK, copy it and paste it in here. All right, then Control T, we're gonna make her a little smaller. Remember our vest is cut off at her waist, so we have to make her just kind of in the corner, only waist up. Somewhere around there. All right, so I'm gonna go on the layers, I'm gonna pull the vest up on the top layer and turn that on and try to kind of roughly position it on her. So use Control T and move the vest around. It's not really in the right perspective yet, but just get it as close as possible. 
and then go to Edit, Transform, Distort, or you can hold your Alt key to drag each one of these points separately so you can kind of distort the vest and make it a little bit better perspective so it fits her body. So have it wrap around her shoulder, pull in that side a little bit. Again, you can do Edit, Transform, Distort, or hold the Alt key on each of these corners and move them around individually. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I want to make a copy of that layer, so I'm going to go to click on that layer and go to Duplicate Layer, or you can do Control J, and then go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. So now I have a copy of it going the other way, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use Control T, then go to Edit, Transform, Distort, or you can hold the Alt keys on each corner. And again, we're just going to make it fit her a little bit better. It's not going to be perfect, but in the end it's going to be dark and you're not going to really be able to tell. All right, so let's merge those two. So shift click both of those and click Merge Layers, which is Control E. And now we can name that Vest. And let's name that layer Model. All right, now you can shift click both of those to move them around and I'm going to position it so you can't see where that vest is cut off. And I want to flip her the other way. I think that the lighting is going to look better in the end with her flip. So do the edit transform flip horizontal again. All right, let's go to this car. It's not exactly the best photo. It's a little out of perspective, but it's good enough for this. So use control T rotate it a little bit. The street is kind of going uphill, so you can rotate it a little. All right, and put it over there in the corner, somewhere around there, and press enter. All right, so now the fun part. We're going to start colorizing this, and this is when it'll really start looking more like a cyberpunk art. So click on the sky and go to Image, Adjust, Color Balance, or Control B. I'm in the midtones and I'm bumping up cyan, magenta, and blue. Then I go to the highlights, I do the same thing. There's not an exact number that you have to put in here, it's up to you. Shadows, cyan, magenta. I'm going to bump up the magenta a lot in the shadows and I'm going to leave the blue there. All right, so now we're going to do that on all the layers. But first, I'm going to go to image adjustment levels. And this is where you can adjust like the um, darkness and lightness of the photo. Just do a slight adjustment there. Not totally necessary for that one. All right, I'm going to name that city. Now I'm going to do the city layer. Image, adjustments, color balance, control B. Again, I'm going to pull in some cyan and magenta and blue on the midtones. Do the same thing on highlights, add cyan, magenta, and some blue, and on the shadows, same thing. This is when you really start making it look colored the way that we're trying to do here. So I'm going to bump the blue all the way up on that. All right, so we're trying to make this look like nighttime. It's starting to look a little better. I'm going to go to image, adjustments, levels, and I'm going to darken the city scene a little bit more. There's no exact science to this. It's your art, so you can make it look however you want. All right, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to work on the car. Go to Image Adjustments Levels. Do that first before you do Color Balance because really it needs more level adjustments than anything. So I'm going to pull that arrow at the bottom right over to the left some more so it looks darker. Then I'm going to pop out the highlights a little bit more. Adjust the midtones. Just keep sliding them around until you start to notice a nice contrast and a lot of darks. All right, now we can go ahead and um, do the color balance again, Control-B. always pulling in more cyan and magenta and blues.
And I want to get a lot of magenta in my highlights. Now for the model, do the same thing. Image adjustments, levels. So we want a lot of contrast and we don't want it to look so bright. Oops, not that one. So pull that bottom arrow in. Make it darker. And then go to the color balance, control B again. Again, we're going to pull in cyan and some blue. Do a little more blue on this. I don't think she needs as much magenta with her coloring. All right, and then same thing, we're going to do the vest. So go to levels, image adjustments levels. Again, pull that bottom right arrow in so we can lose a lot of the brightness. and color balance. This time I'm just going to do the uh, mid-tones on that. That looks like good enough for me. All right, now we're going to put a shadow under the car. So we need to make a new layer. We need to blacken that street so you can't see like the bottom of the car and the left corner of the picture. And then I'll grab black as the color, and my color picker and then get the brush tool and we need a soft brush so hardness is zero make it a pretty big and use the bracket keys to make it bigger if you need to and just hit the corner of the picture oops I need to put this layer on top of my city yeah and just hit the corner of it so that the car kind of blends in with the corner of the uh, picture all right so now I want to make another new layer and make some glows. So I'm going to put like some highlights on the uh, model. You could do it on the car too, but in this video I'm just going to show you the model. So go to select, load selection on that layer. Say OK. So now we have her selected. And then I'm going to get some magenta and a soft brush. And I'm just going to go along the outside. I'm not going to brush it all the way in the line. Just hit the outside of it just so it makes the lighting and blue on the other side. All right, now I'm going to make another layer and we are going to start doing the neon, which is when it really comes to life. So you're going to put that layer up on the top, get your lasso tool and zoom in to some of the signs. So if you hold the alt key while using the lasso tool, it makes a straight line. So keep your finger down on the alt key or use the polygonal lasso if you prefer and go around just some of these signs on the edges until you have a selection. Then choose white and go to edit stroke and make it, let's see, I tried three, I think that's a little too much, let's go with two. So change it to two pixels with white and put it in the center. And then we're gonna to go to add a layer style. So click either on effects at the bottom or go to layer, layer style and choose outer glow. Now it starts to look like neon. So outer glow, you can pick your color right there. I have it on screen. You can change the size of it down here. I just have a small glow on mine. So you can change it to any color you want. Um, on this one, I think I'm just going to leave it blue for these, and more of a cyan blue, because it goes with the art. So I'm going to make one layer of some blue neon. So I'm going to speed this up and just do some of the outlines on these signs. And I'm going to make another layer called Pink Neon. And I'm going to do this the same way. I'm going to add the uh, layer style and add an outer glow. This time I'm going to change the color to pink. Say OK. 
and do the same thing. Get my lasso tool, go around the edges of some of the signs. I'm not going to do all of them in this video, but you kind of get what to do. Now if you get the brush tool and you put it on 100% hard and make your brush like two or three pixels, you can actually paint anything on this layer and it will look like neon. All right, and I'm going to use that to just trace some of the lettering that are on the signs. You can use it to do other really cool effects around the car if you want to, if you want to give it some neon. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how if you just trace over some of the lines that are already there with the brush tool, it can give it a really cool effect. All right, I'm not going to show you me um, drawing all those because it takes too long, but I want to show you one last thing, and that is to make a glow layer. So make a new layer and get a brush. Make the opacity really low, like around 10 or 15, and use the colors that you use for your neon. And make your brush soft and big. And then just brush lightly on there, just so it kind of gives it a little bit more of a lighting ambiance to it. And then I'm going to make another layer and put a glow under the car. I'm going to cut out that window on the car layer and then get the uh, magic wand tool to select it and make a new layer, fill it with white, and then just lower the opacity of that layer. That way you can see through it, but there's still a reflection. So this is what I have at the end. I did a little extra tweaking here and there to my colors and I added some more neon signs. I lightened the car a little bit and used my lasso tool to make those flames shooting out of the back of the car. So you're welcome to add your own twist to it. I hope you have fun doing this.